Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India So welcome welcome back for the continuation of active and passive immunity and vaccination okay so we are going to continue what we are discussing in the last lecture so this is the um, routine uh, acknowledgement like definitely i am very much deft like i am using many images and slides from general mineral biology book and in uh, continuation like what we are already discussed like vaccine can be based on attenuated pathogens or material from killed organism okay so whichever is possible whichever is available depending on that and advantage disadvantage that will uh, come uh, like both of uh, them has a problem but before going to that what i would like to say is even that we know there is so much vaccine it is so simple to discuss like you kill the virus or make attenuated or whole organism um, or subunit vaccine make it do the primary injection so body will give the protection no it is not that simple because the organisms are even smarter than that okay so they can somehow bypass the immune system in such a way the vaccine does not work okay so everybody is particularly this year when i'm uh, taking this course this year whole world is under pandemic of covid-19 and all over the world is trying to develop vaccines okay not only that covid-19 is a very recent uh, outbreak but before that the old uh, aged disease like malaria you see the right hand side what we are showing here in this table this is the name of the disease and this is the estimated annual mortality rate okay you see the malaria there are almost 6,18,000 lakhs cystosomiasis not much but it's very painful disease it intestinal worm very little but childs are suffering for that tuberculosis 9,34,000 lakhs diarrheal disease okay it is 14 lakhs 97 so almost 15 lakhs diarrheal disease many times kill individual it's a lot of casualty happens but most of the time diarrheal disease like whether it's a bacterial infection viral infection or a parasitic infection like amoeba giardia uh, protozoan parasite infection it is not killing the individual but it is killing lot of man hours okay so lot of people are suffering from um, this diarrheal problem all over the world and you can see the number so we need a vaccine a real vaccine so not not only to save the people from death or um, uh, casualty but also a lot of men or a lot of individuals are losing man hours because of this stomach upset respiratory infection huge number corona is one of them hiv aids measles so these are measles are okay vaccines are there but not 100 percent protective so what happened these diseases are still people are trying to develop vaccines so it is not that theoretically production or making vaccine is very simple and easy and straightforward but it is not the real case scientists are trying all over the world for many such diseases so that vaccine can be developed okay we are not as lucky as the smallpox and we are going to be lucky for another disease very soon I am sure that World Health Organization is going to say that okay, polio is eradicated from the earth okay, just like the smallpox was declared long time back okay, 1979 polio is going to come back in the same way we are going to see there is no polio I mean there are number of polio patients are very rare now but it is not zero. Okay. So, until unless it is last uh, next 10 years there will be no infection we cannot say that that it is eradicated. So, we are waiting to hear the good news from World Health Organization. Okay. So, most effective vaccines generated what most effective vaccine generated antibodies 
and what the antibodies are doing you know the effector function of antibody is what effector function of antibody is neutralization of the toxins because if there is any toxin they will bind and neutralize so the toxin cannot find opsonization separation or killing the bacteria from the system and complement activation so somehow it stop pathogenicity and infection it will remove the existing one it will clear the toxin okay so our goal will be to produce a vaccine candidate so that it can induce the humoral immunity much more so that in normal bacterial infection cases okay humoral immunity much more so that it uh, can effectively work against bacteria but if it is in case of the virus definitely humoral immunity is very important because antibody can neutralize the virus particle also but at the same time we have to induce the t cell immunity so that cytotoxic t cell can kill virus infected cell okay so this is one another or few more points of the good vaccine candidates are it should be long lasting protection it is not the one vaccine i mean many vaccine you will see particularly the tetanus vaccine every time we if there is a cut we go to doctor they ask when did you take the last time okay it is improving definitely improving but their memory or their uh, effectivity is not that long okay so there are few things we have to remember during production or synthesis or discovery of the vaccine one it should be definitely safe okay vaccine must not itself cause illness or death so the initially at the very beginning what happened in before 1900 okay before 1900 or very early 1900 the regulation or the act was not that strong i mean when all this um, pasteur and louis pasteur and jenner when discovered and many others when discovered the different vaccines the regulation act was not that strong but now it is very strong i mean we cannot have a single casualty if possible we definitely we should so it should be safe it should be protective like vaccine must protect against the illness resulting from the exposure of the live pathogen i mean it what that is the purpose okay give sustained protection that just i told it should protect for several years many vaccine you have to take every years for different reason some are not good vaccine or some uh, infectious agents are changing like the influenza virus every year there is a new outburst of new variety so old one is not working so we have to take it nothing doing but some vaccines does not work properly or uh, not uh, sustainable so that we have to take again induces neutralizing antibody that just i told it should induce more antibody so that it can neutralize the toxin or the pathogens okay so, uh, that will give better immunity induce protective t cells that i just told in case of virus it should give the protective t cell immunity so that not only virus if there is a intracellular pathogen you know leishmania donovani mycobacterium tuberculosis mycobacterium lepri which grow inside the macrophage then we need th1 response so in that case if you would like to develop the vaccine so we have to manipulate in such a way that particular vaccine should induce the th1 response as soon as new infection come okay it is not the t cell is not the only like virus infection we need cytotoxic t cell th1 is also important and definitely t helper cell is important everywhere and practical consideration that is are very important it should be low cost it should be biologically stable it should be easy of administration and may zero or minimum side effects it should not be few vaccines has certain side effects okay so these are also important okay it is it is a management problem we may not think at this moment okay at, at this moment we may not consider that but this is a serious problem okay in very brief i will not continue it again suppose developing a vaccine or discovering a vaccine inside the lab testing 5 10 animals or say 1000 individuals is one thing 1000 individual is also a big scale but when you see the total population like in this moment at this at the present time like whole world is affected with coronavirus or the covid 19 
So, if we develop vaccine, it is not like 1, 2000 people, everybody needs to have it. So, first thing is identification development, the research part, then you have to produce that much amount of the product, so that you can distribute. Not only that, from the production side to the extreme corner of the country, like where there is no maybe good electricity or uh, may not have a good roads to reach there. So, their stability and most of the time vaccine is as a protein or the organism, it should be in the cold. Okay. Many parts of the country or many parts of the world, there is no electricity and even electricity is there, there no uh, guarantee like how long it will stay. So, the maintenance is very, very important and if the vaccine is not maintained throughout their life properly, it loses its activity. So, even immunization you may think okay, the vaccine is administered, but it will not do its own job. So, that production, supply chain management, use everything is important. Second, easy of administration which is very, very important thing. Okay. Why it is important? Because many times we see that uh, vaccine is uh, administered by injection. Okay. Even it is simple injection is also it is cost effective, not cost effective. You need a syringe, you need a needle, you need some alcohol and you need expert hand. Okay. It is not, if it is oral or a nasal, okay, you take just one or two drop, anyone can do that. You can train how to do this in 5 minutes, but training or giving hmm, the training to someone how to inject, if it is muscular, it is fine. Many way you can do it uh, administer the vaccine candidate. It may be intramuscular, intravenous, in subcutaneous, peritoneal, oral or nasal. So, best is definitely oral or nasal. Intravenous is more critical, it takes lot of time and the person who is going to give the intravenous injection need to have real good training. Okay. So, development of a vaccine this route of administration is also important. Okay. And route of administration is important for another reason, the route of administration is important for another reason. So, uh, let me talk this one, I will come in continuation of this. Live attenuated viral vaccines are more potent than killed vaccine. Why? Because killed vaccine, I mean how the virus immunity grows, you remember again I am repeating and that is how this uh, is come the knowledge of immunology is little bit uh, required. Virus grow inside the cell, viral antigen is presented by MIC1 which is recognized by the T cell. Right? So, now if you inject the dead cell or dead virus, what will happen? That will be recognized by an B cell, it is fine, but T cell will how the T cell will recognize because that virus is not going to grow inside, they are not going to grow in any antigen. So, there will be no MHC 1 presentation, no T cell uh, cytotoxic T cell activation. So, half of the immunity is closed, right? am I clear? So, heat killed virus is not going to produce any or synthesize any protein. If they do not synthesize any protein, no more antigen presentation and pre uh, by MHC 1. So, if MHC 1 is not doing that, cytotoxic T cell activation is not happening. The antibody production is fine, right. So, half of the immune system is not working uh, against that. So, any cytotoxic T cell memory is not going to be there, but in just in other case like the live attenuated virus, what will happen? The live attenuated virus in that case, they cannot make the disease but they can activate the immune system because they will go inside, they will grow and um, produce the protein, do the MHC 1 uh, presentation and rest of the thing will be okay. Only difference they are not causing the pathogenicity or the manifestation of the disease. So, that way heat kill is more safe, definitely more safe than the attenuated because there is always a chance to come back if there is a natural mutation, but it is not that effective. Same way route of administration is also important. I am giving the example similarly, 
suppose one particular virus infects through nasal infection. Now, this time again uh, I am taking the situation of the current situation like the corona virus whether it is a not necessarily COVID 19 SARS, MERS, influenza virus what they are doing they are infect through nose right. So, all immune system is going to see them in lung or other respiratory uh, region first, but if you make a corona virus or the SARS or the influenza virus surface protein purify make a subunit protein and inject into muscle. So, natural path is disturbed. So, whatever the immune system is supposed to do in case of uh, virus which infect lung and if the protein is seen in muscle that will not give the real or uh, not cannot mimic the real situation. Uh, so, that that way the administration route is important. Okay. Some bacteria say salmonella or they are in the throat and some bacteria cause disease in the elementary canal. Okay. So, if you inject that protein into muscle, so the protection of the elementary canal which we need the IgA mostly because that is the only one secret. So, that response is not going to happen. So, if you show the immune system the real basic what we are doing actually we are trying to mimicking the whole system as if some natural infection happened. Natural infection will not happen by through injection and needle in the muscle most of them right. So, life attenuated virus and the natural path of administration is always better. Okay. But, this is not always possible it is uh, and definitely the oral administration is easier that we just discussed I am not talking about that, but biologically or in point of immunological point of view live attenuated virus and real root of infection if that can be done is best. Okay. So, if anything in the elementary canal either the fecal or the oral route will be the best way to uh, administer the antigen because that is the place where it natural habitat of in uh, in an individual. Okay. So, live attenuated virus what we use actually in today's date is the polio, measles, mumps, rubella and varicella. Okay. So, all the childhood immunization after birth most of the immunization we, that uh, this polio, measles, mumps, rubella are uh, varicella are varicella we do not do it here in our country, but this is the childhood vaccination in um, adult also we do in some special cases not always. Okay. Other attenuated live viral vaccine that are licensed for special circumstances for the use of high risk population okay. that um, uh, pox virus, yellow fever virus in some cases because vaccine you we are assuming when you are using vaccines we are assuming that individual whom I am going to be vaccinated is immunologically perfect. So, that is not always true there are a lot of people which are immunocompromised they do not have immune system working for many reasons effect of drugs like those uh, who are under um, immunosuppressive drug and in case of any disease mutational disease or other disease. HIV infection their immune system is already down. So, their B T cell B cell is not working properly. So, vaccine is not always going to work for them. So, vaccine is only for individuals who have good immune system or at least moderate immune system. So, how we make the live attenuated virus? Major practice of the uh, best way to do that is or common practice I should say the common practice is say this is the human pathogenic virus. Okay. So, what we do is we cannot use a human as a uh, reservoir or the um, farming organism. right? So, we grow animal cell in culture or laboratory, we incubate the virus along with the animal cell. So, it infects grow and normal cycle. So, what we will have we have to grow the cell and supply the virus. So, more virus will come. So, after culturing the virus in human cells you take this it is not always happen in this case everywhere in sometimes some virus grown in egg cell also that is how I said the egg protein may contaminate particularly in case of the polio virus. So, 
if you take this virus initially grown in animal cell okay transfer it to monkey cell okay human cell line and monkey cell line are not same so why i mean they will also infect so monkeys when they are growing monkey cell for long time what will happen they change or they will have some mutation so that they can better fit in monkey cell clear while growing in monkey cell what will happen they will change itself so that it will not um, uh, it will grow better in monkey cell during that process it loses the pathogenicity to infect human okay so this virus no longer grows well in human cells that is called attenuation clear so human virus initially cultured at human cell they were happy suddenly the target or host cell change so they grow slowly and in after that they change itself so that they grow, can grow better but while doing while acclimatizing them or adjusting or adapting them with the monkey cell they lost the uh, pathogenicity or uh, effectiveness against the human cell or human so that virus we can use this is called attenuation we can reach that by recombinant way also okay what how so suppose this is the virus and you see there are three genes say for example one is green another is red another is yellow okay so just to simplify the whole uh, thing so three color three genes are there so in recombinant way rdna technology what we can do is we can modify the red part you see red is one of the surface antigen okay say suppose by which it infects or attached to the human cells clear so if we change this red part mutated in some way so you see here also the it was uh, uh, like circular half circle and here it is a triangle so it changed the mutation or the protein structure in such i mean such a way so it will um, not express this red one as such it will change its shape and size or you delete completely the red gene completely deleted so the virus become a different kind of virus that surface protein is not here so now this virus will be uh, I, I mean the newly generated virus by recombinant technology either this one modified one or deleted one what will happen they cannot attack or infect the human cells by the or uh, in one word I can say they, they will lose their virulency. So, they cannot cause the disease. So, this way if you make I mean uh, if this one is I mean it is very unlikely that the mutation will revert back to its original form because it is not a single mutation, but this is uh, the both the virus will maintain its immunogenicity, but lost its virulency this way also we can make the uh, attenuated virus. Okay. So, live attenuated vaccine can be developed by selecting non pathogenic or disabled bacteria or by creating genetically attenuated parasite. Okay. So, attenuation this is one culture differently or you can say that non pathogenic bacteria you take a non pathogenic bacteria or disabled bacteria and make or express. So, one variety which has a similar property, but non pathogenic. Okay. So, for example, if we go quickly, suppose this is one bacteria, this bacterium or this set of bacteria is non pathogenic, this is non pathogenic, okay. but another bacteria which is pathogenic, which has some protein in the surface. So, somehow this is say I can say this is a natural mutant what we developed by recombinant technology okay, possible. So, naturally it loses its virulence, but it does not have that particular protein. So, what we can do we can take some DNA part from here put here. So, that non virulent, but it will express some immunogenic protein which can be similar to that. So, this particular bacteria will have the immunogenic property like the virulence one, but it will not have any pathogenicity that can also be used as 
uh, as a live and attenuated person. Okay. Another thing is say parasite, what happened in malaria parasite? One of their life cycle they grow in the saliva of the mosquito, uh, from there the saliva of the mosquito when the mosquito bite there is a form called sporozoite that sporozoite come the wild type version what happened? First they go to liver, okay. it is a very interesting life cycle. So, any of you are interested further go and read the malaria parasite life cycle it is very interesting, but here it is very brief. Okay. So, hepatocyte to liver and um, liver stage and then it make the merozoites and that merozoite come out to the blood and started infecting started infecting the RBC clear. So, now what happened by genetically and attenuated virus. So, it can be uh, induced by mutations single mutation and double mutation what happened this is the mutation is given this is a single mutation this is a double mutation. What happened by this mutation in two different genes the sporozoite lose its effectivity to grow inside the hepatocyte. Okay. So, they enter, but they cannot grow or continue the life cycle. What will happen? So, the sporozoite will remain same and this particular cannot grow and proceed further. So, no disease same way single one it will go little more it will go up to the liver stage, but cannot proceed further. So, this is also a process by which we can make the attenuation. Okay. So, that the organism is exactly same, but one or two gene change the life cycle or the cell cycle here because it is a single cell. So, that they cannot proceed for I mean uh, cause the disease, but can be used as vaccination or immunization that is very I mean this progress is coming up I and mean, this is I mean uh, people are trying or the scientists are trying to develop this way. Uh, there are many other problem uh, in parasite that is why there is so far today the till to death there is no vaccine available commercially or approved vaccine against any parasitic disease not only malaria. No parasitic disease vaccine like malaria, trypanosome, uh, giardia, amoeba, trichomonas, whatever toxoplasma any protozoan parasite you name no vaccine is developed. So, that means they are even much smarter than us or our immune system. Okay. The route of vaccination is an important determinant of success that I already told discuss like why it is because original route of infection if we can follow that is the best. Okay. Otherwise definitely there is some time we cannot uh, do that. So, we have to take because something is always better than nothing. So, that way uh, we can have uh, uh, we uh, without any alternative we do some other uh, alternative route, but best is the natural uh, path by which it infects. This Boratella pertussis vaccination illustrates the importance of the perceived safety of vaccine. This is what this is the organism this is a bacteria called whooping cough. Okay. Why this line is there people realize people understand that vaccine is very important. What we can understand now okay, when I am giving the lecture in 2020, we know lot about the immunology, we know lot about the medical science vaccination immunization, but if you go back only 50, 60, 70 years people were not aware of immune system much. Okay. Antibody developed discovered MHC discovered in 1958 only. Okay. The first MAC was reported people had idea something is there, but what is that nobody knows in 98 or 99 I do not remember correctly the MAC 1 structure was determined first. So, immunology is that way in still in infancy. So, immune system or immunology and even vaccination neither the scientist nor the general people are very much aware. So, people were scared about whether they should get the because that time the subunit vaccine or all the modern um, generation vaccine system or technique was not there most of the time the live vaccine right the, or attenuated by chance. So, first one is a polio uh, in that um, history. So, polio vaccine. So, people did not trust on them. So, everybody was skeptical about if I take what will happen. But something if, if disease happen normally that nothing doing, but uh, I cannot help, but 
knowingly or purposefully I am injecting the uh, pathogenic organism in my body people are very cautious about it. Okay. But this discovery of this whooping cough before this vaccination lot of people or child used to die. But when these vaccinations start in the childhood I mean it not every country accepted at the very beginning. Particularly in case of Japan what happened it started in 1972 okay, just 60 not I mean say 50 years back okay, and in child at the age of 3 months. What happened in 1975 one child died and as a result Japan government stopped this vaccination. Okay. They said okay, no it we should not give them that early it should be a adult age. So, they started again at the age of 5 years of age of the uh, kid. So, as soon as they stop this in the childhood the mortality rate increase again. So, then they realize no maybe one or two some sporadic case may happen this may be for something else. So, they bring it back. So, this particular vaccine I mean the whooping cough vaccine or the borderline pertussis vaccine actually tells the whole world that the vaccination is very very important until unless you immunize your child wait for the natural infection and get them immunity it is not a wise decision. Okay. So, now I will uh, stop here I will continue the same, same topic and same story telling episode in next class. Okay. Till then bye.